in order to let the mind wander and prepare for the big thoughts that all of us are hoping to achieve, you know, do you have to take a kind of solitary ramble in the woods? Or can you just follow a random path of hyperlinks? You know, is surfing the web itself an ideal form of mental preparation? Um, well, I, I was just talking about this with a scientist named Jonathan Schooler at UCSB, who he spent a lot of time in the last couple of years looking at the surprising benefits of daydreaming and mind wandering. And so one of the things he's found is that people who daydream more, who are more likely to lapse into a state of mind wandering while reading a particularly tedious section of War and Peace, and this is a crucial caveat, people who are aware when they begin to mind wander score significantly higher on various tests of creativity and divergent thinking. Hmm. And, and you know, so I started talking to him about knowing this, has this changed the way he thinks? And he talks about now he's, he's very deliberate about building in daydreaming time into his day. He will go on a walk, not in the woods, on the bluffs overlooking a lovely stretch of Pacific Ocean, and he will leave his iPhone behind and dedicate this time just to daydreaming. And, and he talks about all the great ideas he's had while daydreaming. And this got me thinking about you know, one of the ways I, I get anxious about technology, about having this lovely computer in my pocket, is that now every time I get even a little bit bored, I'm waiting in line, I'm, I'm just, I have 30 seconds to pass, I check my email for the millionth time that day, I play a little bit on SimCity, I, I, I lose myself in my three inch screen instead of you know, exploring the usual process of daydreaming, the social counterfactuals, I, you know, the mashup that, that always happens naturally when we daydream. And, and there's been a lot of work in neuroscience on, it's called the default activity, the default network, which is turned on when we daydream. So, so I mean, that is, I think, one of the surprising things I worry about when we talk about technology being everywhere and omnipresent. It's that, is it harder for us to daydream? And if we're daydreaming less, uh, and I don't think you have to be in nature to daydream, but if we are daydreaming less, um, instead of staring at train windows, we're looking at our phone, mm -hmm. what's going to happen? 